Yeah, I think it's about unit economics, right? If we're talking about large language models, everyone thinks, oh, it's GPUs because of the training. Training is very, very compute intensive. That's the expensive part. But when you dig under the surface, you realize that training's really multiple phases, multiple components, but it's a one-time cost for the majority of these large language models. The recurring cost is the one that's really going to be as we're implementing agents and as we see more companies deploying agents, that's where the costs are going to come in. I've seen agents that cost several dollars per interaction or per conversation or to fulfill an intent. That's too much for the unit economics to work for most use cases. And so that's what I was trying to explain in the post is that large language models are going in a different direction. Yes, at some point in the distant future, we will have the one model that can serve them all. But right now, large language models aren't reliable in what we care about when it comes to an agent, which is the workflow, which is delivering the outcome. And we have to do more work in order to make a big model that's also expensive, reliable enough to serve a specific use case like an agent's intended to. So it makes more sense, you know, to your point about smaller is beautiful. Smaller is also cost-effective. Smaller is also more reliable. I mean, define beauty. It is a whole lot of the things that align with the agentic paradigm and with the productization and commercialization paradigms. So if we want to see AI agents become products anytime soon, we're going to need to switch from this big model, one size, one model to rule them all to much, much smaller models, higher reliability, lower cost to serve the intent, easier to maintain, more explainable. I mean, there's, there's just so much more benefit to doing a small approach versus a big one.